Hello everyone, this is Gene from NYC again, I'm back with another video. As always, I would like to thank everyone who has uh, watched the videos, especially the last video, which was like uh, around an hour and a half long, in which I covered the TCPA that was filed jointly by the Moron, Monica Rial, and her fiancé, Ronald Toye. That was a doozy to uh, get through, because while the video itself is almost an hour and a half. The reading, the prep work, putting everything together, figuring out a, a general idea of what I was going to say, took hours. And then I was actually putting it together and then trying to upload the video. I tried to get three times. Uh, YouTube or the internet or whatever just was not with me yesterday. So it was actually quite the task to get done and then, and then to get uploaded. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for the likes and for the views and for the comments. There's just one thing I want to address, since there is someone on that video, and if you check the comments section, you'll see them, who I will say I believe is a troll. Now, I want to be clear. I do not mind dissenting opinions. In fact, I encourage it, because I like to get, I like to read and see where people are coming from, right? I like learning, and I like uh, getting a different viewpoint and opinion on things, even if I personally disagree with it. So I, I want to be clear, I do not mind dissenting opinions and disagreement. I encourage it, <laughs> actually. But what I will not tolerate on my channel is trolling, and I will not tolerate disrespect toward me or toward anybody else. And so if somebody wants to be a troll, and again, if you look at the comments on that video, you will see this person goes by JV something something GV GV. You'll look, you'll look and see it. They have like a green uh, symbol or emblem or whatever. I don't tolerate disrespect. I don't tolerate trolling. And as I told that person in the comments, see, I'm, I will call you out. I'm not the type of person to disregard comments like that. If you're gonna be a jerk. Right? If you're going to be a jerk, I don't like to swear, but I do think in, in this case it's, it's, it's best to be blunt. If you're going to be an asshole about things, then you can get the hell off my channel. Because see, unlike the government, I'm not Congress. I don't have to respect anyone's right to free speech. And I do not tolerate such disrespect and vitriol on my channel. So this person has exactly one more chance they get disrespectful again, I'm going to mute them or disable their comment. By whatever way I have to control the comments, I will use it. I have no issue blocking people or things of that nature. I don't want to do that because I do want free conversation. But again, I'm not going to tolerate trolling. I'm not going to tolerate disrespect. And I will call people out on it. So you can either learn to play nice or you can get out. As Martin used to say, you ain't got to go home, but you need to get the hell out of here. So those are, that's just the general rule on that. Again, dissenting opinions are fine. Just be respectful about it. If you're not going to be respectful, move on out. Get on up, get on out. So now, to the video itself. I'm going to be covering various parts of interest regarding Jamie Marchie's uh, TCPA, the motion to dismiss under the TCPA that I believe was filed yesterday or Friday. At least it was put up um, on uh, Kiwi Farms uh, yesterday, which I'll be linking to. I'll be linking to a lot of stuff once this is once this is done. So I'm going to be covering various parts, sort of like I did yesterday. I right? cover cover various parts. I won't be covering the entire TCPA, but there's so much to it that I'll be covering most of it. I th I would I would say and certainly what I feel to be the most uh, pertinent part. So, generally speaking, it'll be in order as the issues come up in the TCPA. All right, so just, just to give an idea of sort of what the order is or what the flow is going to be, I'm going to try to follow it as best I can as if I were sort of um, reading it. So, this video will probably be very lengthy. I'm hoping not an hour and a half, though to be fair, it wasn't nearly as long as a Ricada Law Street. <laughs> Much love to 
to a Nick, but dear God in heaven, are his streams long? I stayed up all night for the uh, Monica Real one, and, and oh God, I can't do that. I can't do the five hours. <laughs> so hopefully it, it, it won't be uh, nearly as long as that. And I apologize for the city noises, but it's a broiling weekend over here. I've already turned my fans down, and that's probably still going to create some noise. And I cannot, I, I, I usually try to close the windows, but it's honestly too hot. And I don't want to faint of heat stroke <laughs> while I'm recording this. So there's going to be some city noises from, from time to time. So please bear that in mind. I'm trying to figure out ways to deal with that. But until I find a way to deal with that, uh, there's going to be some noise. If you know of any ways, any programs, any things I could do on a budget to sort of, you know, take the noise down or take the noise out, please let me know. So anyway, enough with the... Uh, Pre-ramble, I guess the the preamble to the re to to the pre-ramble, the preamble to the to the pre-ramble. <laughs> Let's get to the content itself. All right, so here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start at the very beginning here. All right, so we have here the uh, says here Vic Mignogna plaintiff versus Funimation Productions. LLC, Jamie Marchi, Monica Rial, and Ronald Toy, defendants in the district court, 141st Ju Judicial District of Tarrant County, Texas. And the formal name of this document is Defendant Jamie Marchi's Motion to Dismiss Pursuant to the Texas Citizens Participation Act, better known as the TCPA. So it says here, to the Honorable Court, Defendant Jamie Marchi, Jamie, moves this court pursuant to Tech, Civ, Prac, and Rem Code. I'm assuming that's some sort of legal reference. There's no link here, so I can't click to anything. 27.003 to dismiss all claims set out in the plaintiff's petition in the above styled and numbered cause and in support of this notion shows, and then it says summary of motion. Plaintiff's lawsuit is an unabashed ploy to quiet his victims and is the precise scenario the Texas legislator sought to prevent when it, when it enacted the Texas Citizens Participation Act in 2011, the, the, the TCPA. As established below, plaintiff's legal action must be dismissed because A, Jamie's complaint of statements are protected by her constitutional rights of free speech and association, B, plaintiff is a public figure, C, because plaintiff cannot put forth clear and specific evidence of each element of each of his claims against Jamie. Jamie therefore asked the court to dismiss plaintiff's claims against her in accordance with the TCPA and to award Jamie her attorney's fees, costs, and sanctions to send a message to abusers across, te across Texas that they cannot use the Texas judicial system to intimidate their victims into silence. So let me just address the first part here, the summary of motion. I have to admit, having read through this, I find Sam Johnson to at least, how do I put it, he doesn't irritate me as much. He still makes outrageous claims in many sections, in my opinion, but I don't think this is personal for him. I think he's just doing his job as an attorney, which is to make the other side look bad. And from a competitive point of view, I can understand that. Again, I, I have worked with several attorneys in my professional life. In fact, uh, one of my former supervisors is now a personal friend of mine, and she's an employment attorney. So I am very familiar with the idea that attorneys have to make the other side look bad, right? So this was much easier for me to get through than Jay Sean Lemoyne or Lemoyne's which was just, that was just irrational, emotional ranting, okay? In my opinion, I'm a lay person, but in my opinion, Jay Sean's got a personal beef with Nick, and this has gone beyond, you know, just him being an attorney. I mean, he was just baseless and just mischaracterizing everything. I mean, Sean here, Sam, not Sean, sorry, Sam Johnson here, who I believe is, is, uh, Jamie's attorney. He mischaracterizes some stuff, but I can see why he's doing it, right? He's mischaracterizing it to make Jamie look good. 
Jay Sean was was mischaracterizing things and making Monica and Ron look worse, in my opinion. So I do believe that again. This is not to say that that uh, I don't think that uh, uh, Sam Johnson is not lying in some areas or spitting the truth. I do when I do, but at least he's playing, is staying in the lines a lot more actually than uh, Jay Sean was. Jay Sean was just that was a rant. That was a rant disguised as a legal document. This, I think, again, while it has its issues, in my opinion, is still more, I guess, objective or more pursuing its objective of trying to make Jamie look good and make Vic look bad. But there are several areas where he, in my opinion, completely twists and misinterprets what Vic said, when, especially when, when he references Vic's testimony. I really wonder if they think that the law, not not the law, that the judge or somebody isn't going to have someone read through all this and read all the evidence and check and see, you know, if whether or not what they're stating in the motion itself is true. So, as I was saying, back to the summary of motion. All right, so here are the things that stand out to me in the summary of motion, right? First, this first line, right? Plaintiff's lawsuit is an unabashed ploy to quiet his victims. Oh, really? Really? Okay, then Then uh, at, let me ask this then. What was this then from Monica Real? And before someone asked, why are you referencing Monica? I am referencing Monica because on the second page, on the second page, right, right under... Uh, right under the section where it says evidence in support of motion right 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 underneath this little table here where it talks about the evidence and and whatnot it says pursuant to texas r civ p58 jamie that be jamie marchie incorporates and adopts by reference the evidence attached to defendant funimation productions Motion to dismiss under the TCPA and to defendants Monica Real and Ronald Toye's motion to dismiss un under the TCPA. So, if my approach is, if, uh, if Jamie can basically latch on to the uh, evidence via reference that's been provided by Funimation, Ron, and Monica, then I can criticize her using that evidence that's been provided by Funimation, Ron, and Monica. So for anybody who's wondering why I'm bringing up a Monica Real tweet when I'm criticizing Jamie Marchie's TCPA, that's why. So, again, so let's, so let's go back to the first one just to establish what I'm talking about, right? So, uh, what is this, one second. So again, just to be clear, right? Uh, the summary of motion. Plaintiff's lawsuit is an unabashed ploy to quiet his victims. Oh, really? So then, what was this? What was this from Monica? What was this from Monica here? You can easily find it on uh, Twitter, right? This is Monica on Twitter, under her own Twitter account, right? At Realisms. This was replying to Drifted Spice and Funimation. Thanks for the tweet. I've screenshotted and sent it to my attorney and law enforcement. I will not be harassed. Have a nice night. That's what Monica wrote. So, wouldn't that classify as... Uh, what's it say here? One second. I gotta scroll back. Wouldn't that qualify as a ploy to quiet, to silence people? I would certainly take that as a attempt at intimidation, as an attempt to uh, threaten and to intimidate people into not speaking out, out of fear of possible uh, legal action. In fact, going back to another Monica tweet, Monica acknowledges just that. One second. So she says here, I just got a, a Scroll down. Where is it? Ah, here we go. So, and this is part of the evidence that was submitted 
with with Monica's uh, TCPA yesterday. So, uh, where is it? One second. Ah, she says here it's a part of a larger larger um, uh, tweet, but she says here. I apologize for lashing out and threatening fans. I want to repeat that. This is what Monica said. I apologize for lashing out and threatening fans. That I believe was in response to the to her tweet that I just read. So why is it okay for Monica to state these things to threaten people and to acknowledge that she threatened people? Right, acknowledge that she threatened people, use the threat of lo threat of legal action to try and silence people, but plaintiff's lawsuit, Vic's lawsuit, is an unabashed ploy to quiet his victims. Vic's lawsuit is not an unabashed ploy to silence anybody. Vic's lawsuit is his last chance to try to recover something of his professional life. That's what it is. It's his last defense. It's not a ploy to attack people. It's the last measure he has to defend himself. That's exact, in my opinion, that's exactly why when Chuck Hoover quite foolishly was trying to broker peace, Monica and Jamie stated that, or rather Monica, but Jamie, I, I believe, agreed. But Monica specifically stated that the only way they would agree to anything was if Vic would... Uh, promise to not sue them or or their employers at, at any point and if he would give up the GoFundMe money and get Nick to apologize. So again, who's trying to quiet their victims? Because I would say it's Monica and Jamie who were trying to quiet Vic and not the reverse. But that's just me. Right, so... Again, the summary of motion states that Jamie's, uh, rather states that established below, plaintiff's legal action must be dismissed because Jamie's complaint of statements are protected by our constitutional rights of free speech and association. Um, no, not to my knowledge anyway. Here's the thing. Her constitutional right of free speech from an, an association, from what I can tell, has not been violated because the constitutional right to free speech and association, right, the First Amendment, and I will address this later on in more detail, but generally speaking, it protects you from being silenced by the government. It does not protect you from being silenced necessarily by other people. Okay, remember the first word in the First Amendment is Congress. Vic is not part of Congress. Vic is not part of any government structure that I'm aware of. He's not part of city government. He's not part of local government. He's not part of state government. He's not part of the federal government. He's a voice actor. He's a private citizen. So I highly doubt that uh, her complaint of statements were violated when, when uh, Ty uh, sent a cease and desist letter about a few tweets, not about all her tweets, I've read the cease and desist letter. He doesn't say that she can't tweet about anything or can't tweet about her experiences that she's alleging. He takes a few tweets. Two of them in particular are the one where, with the very, very, very violent language where she talks about wanting Vic's head and balls and wanting him to suffer. And the other one is the one where, where, where she hypo, um, hypothesizes that Jesus would, have, would burn Vic and send him to hell. Those were the ones, Vic, uh, not Vic, sorry, that Ty was talking about. He didn't say anything about her not being able to, to, to speak about it in general. So yeah, I don't see where her constitutional right to free speech were uh, violated. Or her right to association. She still has a job, right? She still is a voice and a name in the anime community. So where was her right of association uh, violated again. I will address this a little bit later, but still, just briefly uh, addressing it here. So there's that. Then it says plaintiff is a public figure. They still have to define that and prove that. I'll go into that later. But yeah, um, Vic having a hundred, what currently it's 116,000 Twitter followers. 
isn't exactly public figure numbers. Not to insult Vic, but there are voice actors out there, such as Travis Willingham, who has over 280,000 uh, Twitter followers. Does that make him a public figure now? Just because he has a Twitter presence that, again, comparatively speaking, is small? Because you have celebrities like Beyonce, Justin Bieber, and other such entertainers who have millions of Twitter followers and whose name is known everywhere. So, really, how are they public figures? How is Vic a public figure with not even 150,000 Twitter followers? But anyway... And because plaintiff cannot put forth clear and specific evidence of each element of each of his claims against Jamie. We'll see about that. Right, so as with um, Monica and Ron's as with Monica and Ron's uh, TCPA and with Funimations, right, they just want the case thrown out. They want uh, all court costs covered. Right, and Sanctions, just like with the with the Monica and Ron one, they will now want sanctions against Vic, right? Uh, in Jamie's case, it says here to send a message to abusers across Texas that they cannot use the Texas ju- judicial system to intimidate their victims into silence. Okay, if that's the case, again, please tell Monica Rial that. Her sending out emails saying, thanks for the tweet. I screenshotted and I sent it to my attorney for law enforcement. I will not be harassed. Somebody please tell her. Someone please sanction her for that tweet. Because that, that by her own admission, was threatening. She admitted it. She threatened fans with that. She tried to justify it by saying she was scared, but... She admits it that she threatened fans. So if Vic has got to be sanctioned, then sanction Monica too because she was certainly trying to intimidate people into silence. So there's that. That's the first thing. All right, the next thing. The next thing is I'm moving a few pages down, right? And this is. (coughs) Excuse me. This is Monica's, not Monica, sorry. This is Jamie's account of what happened to her, right? This is Jamie's account of Vic's alleged sexual assault. So let me begin. Let me read it. I'm going to make comments throughout, but I'm going to do, do my best to read through it. In approximately two, 2011, so now what? Eight years ago this happened, allegedly. In approximately 2011, Jamie worked as a voice actor for Funimation Productions, LLC. Funimation. On one occasion, while at Funimation's headquarters in Flower Mound, Texas, Jamie was waiting in the lobby when plaintiff Victor Mignana, plaintiff, approached her. Here's the next part. Listen to this. Remember this. Considering that they knew each other, or at least Jamie thought she knew plaintiff, and that it is a common greeting among creatives in the anime industry, Jamie gave plaintiff a hug. Jamie gave plaintiff a hug because she knew plaintiff, considering that they knew each other and that it's a common greeting among creatives in the anime industry. She hugged Vic, presumably without his express consent. It doesn't say here that she asked if she could hug him and he said yes. So we can presume that she hugged him without his consent. So here's my thing. First of all, we get here that she initiated contact. She hugged Vic. Number two, if we're going by the laws that Jamie, Monica, and Ron have established about sexual harassment and physical contact, which is basically that any physical contact, no matter what or why, that is not expressly consented to, is now sexual harassment. This seems to be the standard that uh, they have set. Then guess what? Jamie sexually assaulted Vic Mignogna. By their own standard, Jamie sexually assaulted Vic Mignogna by presumably giving him a hug 
without his express consent. Yet somehow it is Vic who has to defend himself against her allegations, but according to their standard, she sexually assaulted him. You see what the problem is when you have unreasonable standards that do nothing except damn one person and not the other? You get stuff like this. But anyway, continuing. What Jamie did not and could not anticipate was what happened next. Commenting on Jamie's hair, plaintiff began running his hand through the back of Jamie's hair until his palm, palm found the back of her skull. Plaintiff splayed his fingers and moved his hand to the base of Jamie's skull, after which he clenched his hand into a fist, grabbing her hair by the roots and jerked his fist. This is, this is very detailed, I gotta say. This is incredibly detailed. Yanking Jamie's head backward. Having control of Jamie, plaintiff then pressed his lips to her ear and whispered something sexual to her. Jamie doesn't remember the specific words plaintiff spewed at her that day, but she very much recounts the way she felt violated, out of control, and intimidated. At all times during plaintiff's assault on Jamie, she did not consent to nor want such contact as was imposed upon her. Well, did anybody ask Vic if he wanted contact from her? Again, why is her consent such an issue? Why does he bring up the fact that she did not consent to her alleged assault? She has no proof outside of her own words. Keep in mind, I've read this entire thing. I've looked at the supporting documents. There is not a supporting document. There is not an affidavit from anyone. And keep in mind, she says in the beginning, this happened in the lobby at Funimation. The lobby. The lobby is a public space. It's a public area. People are coming and going all day long. There could possibly be a receptionist or a front desk uh, person out there. Yet, she does not produce one witness to this. This is apparently happening in a public space, but Jamie does not produce one witness to her account. Now, some may say, well, what about Monica and Kara? They've told similar stories. Telling a similar story is not the same as having someone swear that they are a witness to your individual account. To my knowledge, Jamie has not provided anybody who was a witness to her account. Remember how Monica said Stan came into the room or knocked on the door and was a witness to how she appeared after Vic allegedly uh, sexually assaulted her? You know how Stan said he doesn't know what she's talking about? Mm-hmm. Exactly. But anyway, uh, shocked and stunned by what plaintiff had done to her, Jamie never felt safe at Funimation again when plaintiff was around. Well, let's see here. Let's see what the plaintiff had to say about that. So one moment, I'm looking up Vic's testimony. I would look up uh, Jamie's, but she hasn't been deposed yet. But anyway, so here's what Vic says, in part. Right, so, so this is Vic talking during his deposition. And if I may say, I saw Jamie in the lobby at Funimation in January of this year, literally a week to ten days before this social media thing started, and she's like, hey, hon, and went over and hugged her and said hello. She and I have had, as far as I've known, a casual, friendly relationship for many, many years. That is Vic's account. One moment. Sorry, everyone. Minor interruption. So, as I was saying before, right, so Vic says that up from seven to ten days, they were greeting each other and physically affectionate. So... That's quite different than the story that uh, is being told here, right? Saying that she never felt safe at Funimation again when Plaintiff was around. But according to Plaintiff, they had hugged and greeted each other seven to ten days before this all happened. And again, given the dubiousness of her story, and I might have not with this thing yet, but given the dubiousness of her story, I highly, highly doubt that Vic is lying about this. But we haven't seen her deposition yet, unfortunately, so I can't compare 
uh, his depo to hers. All I can go by is statements. And he says that seven to ten days before they greeted each other, I wonder if it'll be when she gets deposed and asked about that, if it'll be like Monica saying that, oh, well, well, well uh, that was for work, right? I'm an actress. I'm paid to make things look good, even, even when they aren't. But anyway, continuing, right, says here that shocked and stunned by what plaintiff had done to her, Jamie never felt safe at Funimation again when plaintiff was around, but she was hugging him. But anyway, Considering that Plaintiff was one of the most ubiquitous voice actors on the convention circuit, Jamie felt that nobody would even believe her if she told her story, let alone have her career survive. You know what's interesting to me about this particular line? How many women, her, Monica, Cara Edwards, and others, keep saying that they were afraid for their career, they were afraid for their career, but with the exception of Cara, and again, her account is dubious at best, but with the exception of Kara, none of them actually produce any proof or any statements where Vic actually threatened their career. They, they act as if his mere presence is somehow a threat to, to their career. They, they never state, for example, that Vic said, if you do this for me, I'll get you a role on the show. They don't say things like, like allegedly Vic saying, for example. They don't say things like, oh, well, Vic told me that if I didn't go along with it, then he'd have me fired and I'd never work in this town again. They never say things like that, right? Those would be actual threats to your career, right? That would be demanding. He would, in those instances, in those examples, he would be, he would be demanding quid, quid, quid pro quo, right? This for that. Sexual favors for either elevating their career career or not damaging their career, yet they never allege that. They always just say this ambiguous, oh, I, wouldn't, I, I didn't want to hurt my uh, career, but they never actually explain or give examples with the exception of Kara. And if you don't know, what Kara said is that uh, Vic, she alleges that Vic tried to basically harass her into having sex with him at a hotel where to the point where she was sitting on the floor terrified having the shower run for an hour keep in mind she presumably doesn't call her her husband doesn't call the police but then she says that the next day that uh, she was supposed to be basically part of a panel and like in like an artist alley type thing like in a line and the idea was that people would come see Vic but then they would see these other people and sort of you know move down the line and pick up, you know, some some of their uh, wares that they're selling. And she alleges that Vic at the last moment had her move into a room by herself and that, you know, she basically didn't get any business that day because because Vic, you know, took her out the line and put and made her move somewhere else. First of all, one would imagine that if her account is indeed true, that she would actually welcome being in a in a separate space from Vic. But again, she never provides any proof. There's no video proof, to my knowledge, that what she says is true. But anyway, she's the only person, to, to my knowledge, has actually said, oh, Vic did this in retaliation or in response to that. But everyone else has just made these vague, I was afraid for my career statements without actually, I don't know, doing anything or actually attributing any actions or words to Vic. Just saying, uh... I was fearful for, for, for my career. There are plenty of reasons to be fearful for one's career. It doesn't always involve, you know, a, a, a powerful actor. For example, if your voice is declining, or if you're having personal problems and you're not getting to work on time and you're doing poor work, that's a reason to fear for your career. And it's got nothing to do with someone basically trying to manipulate you. But anyway... Continuing, right, like countless victims before her, she kept her story to herself as a means of protecting herself from retribution or worse, further trauma. Right, so there is uh, that. So, next thing is, right, so this is part of uh, the next page, but here's the part that I wanted to uh, focus on, focus on here, right? Because this is is what Jamie said 
online and what she said online directly contradicts the story she just told at the top right so here's what it says at the beginning of 2019 plaintiff's victim started speaking out about the pain plaintiff had wrought upon them seeing the hatred and shame plaintiff's followers attempted to hurl at plaintiff's victims online jamie could no longer stay silent on February 8, 2019, Jamie bravely told the true story of her encounter with plaintiffs so many years before. And this was, again, this, this is on her Twitter, right? So this is, this is an excerpt from her Twitter account. You're going to see how much it contrasts from what she officially stated at the top. All right, it says... Several years ago, I was in the lobby at my job when I was approached by a co-worker. This guy gave me the creeps already. You know how it says at the beginning that she, uh, that she hugged Vic because they knew each other for years and it's a common greeting in the anime industry to hug and to kiss? Now, right, that's what she says now. Back in February 8th, she was saying that this guy that we now know as Vic gave her the creeps. And he gave almost all the women at my job the creeps. So now it's Vic gives, gives people the creeps. Why would you hug him then? Why would you hug him of your own volition? Why would you initiate contact with him if he gives you and all the women the creeps? Monica made a similar um, uh, assertion, right? Why did you hug him? Oh, well, uh, uh, we have to keep appearances. It's basically her answer. So which is it, Monica? Either either it's the first account in this in, in this affidavit where you say that uh, you that you uh, uh, knew Vic or you, or you thought you knew Vic, right? And because it was common in the anime industry at the time in 2011 to hug and to kiss and greeting, you allegedly, or rather I should say, pre pre presumably, not even. Presumably, it says up there that she gave him a hug. So either you hugged him because you knew him and you felt comfortable, or he gave you the creeps, and therefore your reason for hugging him makes no sense. But anyway, says, but I always felt like I had to be nice to him anyway because of how revered he was in the industry. Okay, so, so it really is like Monica now. I only hugged him for, for work-related purposes. Right, so con continuing, we hug a lot, and on occasion we'll give a kiss on the cheek. But even for an, for an, 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 an affectionate, Jesus, an affectionate environment, this felt off. I didn't say anything to him about it. Hmm. Again, you claim that this was unwanted, right? That you hugged him only because you felt you had to for some reason. But you don't tell him anything. How is, how is Vic supposed to know that he's offending people if no one ever tells him? She had eight years. She sat on this for eight years and yet never tells him that, he's, that, that he made her uncomfortable. In fact, again, going to his own account, right, that when they had spoken seven to ten days earlier, they hugged. 2019, they're hugging. Late 2018, depending on, on, on what ten to se seven to ten days earlier was, they're hugging. And you wonder why I don't believe you. You wonder why I do not believe you, Jamie. But anyway, it was just his fingers in my hair. I didn't think it was a big deal. At that point, he splayed his fingers, put his hand at the base of my skull, and made a fist. When he did this, he grabbed my hair close to the root, effectively preventing me from moving my head at all. He then jerked his fist, yanking my head backwards and toward him, and whispered something in my ear. I don't remember what he said specifically, but I do remember it being sexual in nature. This was not normal. This was not just a hug or a kiss on the cheek. I did not like it. I have no memory of getting out of his grasp, but I assume, what the F are you doing, she says the full word, but I don't want to say it here, was part of my technique. So again, she's asserting that Vic went from just, you know, the kind, casual uh, touching of her hair, 
right? Playing, playing with her hair, which he does admit to, to now grabbing her hair and pulling her head back. Seriously, grab your own hair, grab your own hair, get a good grip on it, and then try to wrench your own head back. That hurts. You would certainly remember if somebody who you trusted, or rather, now we don't know, right? Because in one account, if she's, she's hugging him, now it's, he always gave me the creeps. So we don't know. But somebody she at least felt comfortable enough to be in physical proximity to. Again, if he's grabbing your hair and bending you backwards, you're pretty physically close to him. So even if he did give her the creeps, she still felt, fi still felt comfortable enough to be incredibly close to him physically, right? To be within uh, arm's reach, if not even closer. And yet she's going to say that he goes from being, again, kind and, and, and casual to grabbing her hair and wrenching her head back and, and whispering something sexual in her ear, but she's not going to remember what he said. I've heard accounts where, where people talk about being sexually assaulted or raped and whatnot, and they can recall the, the smell on the person's breath. They can recall what was on their breath what their breath smelled like. But she can't recall what Vic allegedly said. He said something sexual. Well, what the hell does that mean? Something sexual. Something sexual can range from, hey baby, what's your name? To, uh, we're gonna bang tonight, right? Or, or much more coarse language. What do you mean by he said something sexual? But anyway, so, uh, there's that. There's, there's that one right there. Alright, so, the next part that I want to cover is uh, point six here, right? Which is, the public response to Jamie's statement, this is what the form says, this is what the TCPA says. The public response to Jamie's statement, like many of other plaintiff's victims, has been one of dichotomy. He's right about that. On the one hand, other of plaintiff's victims, you mean accusers, but anyway, uh, other, on, on the one hand, other of plaintiff's victims, Jamie's fans and friends and supporters, I love this part, and supporters of women's right to be free from control or invasion by others have all been outspoken in their support of Jamie and her strength and courage. You do realize that by putting that in there, he's implying that if you don't agree with Jamie, then you must not be a supporter of, of a woman's right to be free from control or invasion. I just love the, the, uh, the uh, implied, if you don't agree, you're a social ill in this. But anyway, continuing. On the other hand, plaintiff supporters have incited a remorseful, remorseless revenge campaign aimed at disparaging, demeaning, and further objectifying plaintiff's victims. Um, no. People have challenged them and questioned them and called them out. That is not being disparaging. Okay, well, some have, have been demeaning, that's true. But again, look, look at the voice actors and how they've responded. See, that's the part that he conveniently leaves out so that he can paint this uh, damsel in distress narrative for Jamie, right? Jamie and Monica and Ron, right, were going at fans, were insulting fans, again, it was Monica who put out that infamous your tweet has been screenshotted uh, uh, tweet. And not to mention, again, all you gotta do is just go through their Twitter feeds. Just go through their Twitter feeds, look at February, look at, look at March, and you'll see that they gave as good as it got, as, as good as they got. Nobody, with the exception of Vic, if anybody was a damsel in distress, it was Vic. But, nor, but Monica, Jamie, Ron, they were not playing the damsel in distress. They were not just sitting there and taking the abuse of angry fans wanting to know why the hell they were saying these things. They gave as good as they got. You know that, what they call that in the streets of New York? Mutual combat. But anyway, continuing. Right. Jamie has been harassed online, ridiculed in the most misogynistic of ways, and has had her physical safety threatened by plaintiff's fans. Hmm, prove it. I haven't seen any proof that anybody threatened her physical safety. 
And I love this. Ridiculed in the most misogynistic of ways. I had no idea that simply not believing Jamie just because she's a woman and using my own work experience as a standard to judge all this like, judge all this by was me being misogynistic. Hmm, because I refused to just go along with the narrative of believe women, believe survivors, even when I see hole after hole after hole after hole after godforsaken hole in their stories. They have more holes than Swiss cheese. But because I don't automatically go, go, go along with it because alleged survivor of sexual abuse and vagina I'm a misogynist. I'm a, I am apparently now a self-hating woman. Just so y'all know, I'm a self-hating female. I'm, I'm a misogynist because I don't immediately go along with the party line. You know what's worse? I was taught to question, the, to question these accounts and to dig for evidence and how to think critically by attorneys. And two of those attorneys were women. Damn it. We've been hating ourselves all this time. How will we ever redeem ourselves? Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. At times, I just have to laugh. At times, I just have to laugh. Anyway, continuing. So, this is the uh, next part. This is a few pages down. This is, uh... What's this part of? Uh, this is part of, um, jeez, where is this? <laughs> okay, yeah. So anyway, um, hmm. this is further down the line. Uh, where was I, where was I, where was I? Sorry. Oh, this is talking about the language in, in uh, Jamie's tweets, because we all know she sent out those tweets saying that Jesus would make uh, Vic burn in hell for what he's allegedly done and that she wants Vic's head and she wants Vic's balls and she wants him to suffer and all that stuff. So this is in reference to the tweets. So this reads, this is point eight, I believe, or part of point eight. It says, while some of the tweets admittedly contain strongly worded opinion commentary, whoo, whoo, Ooh, I would. I personally would consider those tweets to be more of uh, possible incitements to violence, given the violent language and rhetoric. But if you want to say it's just strongly worded opinion commentary, you go ahead, bro. Okay, so one second. Sorry. None are false statements of fact made by plaintiff with knowledge of their falsity. Or reckless regard, or reckless disregard of whether or not they were true. Mm, I think that's questionable at best. There's a reason why Ty sent the cease and desist letter, in which he does go over, he does explain why these uh, statements that she made are malicious. But I think you should just read that yourself. I don't want to go on terribly long. So it's been forty some minutes. So you can look at that yourself. It's in the evidence section down in the um, uh, document. The letters that Ty sent to sent to uh, Jamie, the cease and desist letter, and the um, and the uh, um, preservation of electronic documents letter. Right. So anyway, another part of this which I which I find. Uh, interesting is this is part nine right so it says while sworn under oath this is what the document says while sworn under oath in his deposition plaintiff plainly admitted to assaulting plaintiff I'm assuming he means uh, defendant because because but with, with this he's saying that Vic assaulted himself so I'm assuming it's just a typo and he means that that plaintiff admitted to assaulting uh, defendant which would be Jamie in this case in exactly the same manner as described by Jamie in her statement. So it quotes Vic, right? It quotes, it takes, it takes a quote out of context. All right, so here's what it says. So again, this is quoting Vic. And so, so, so this is what Vic said. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love your hair. And she's like, I know, I just got it. And I walked around the, 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 the counter and I was kind of standing there, kind of flipping it, right? flipping it and like oh my gosh it's really beautiful I love it and I, I 
I put my hand up in the bottom of it and I'm like, oh, this is great. Just looking at this alone out of context, this is not an admission to sexual assault. Unless, again, we are indeed going by their, their definition of sexual assault, which is um, unconsented physical touch, in which then, yes, uh, Jamie physically assault, uh, sorry, sexually assaulted Vic too when she hugged him without his express permission. Or rather, I am presuming, I should say, I am presuming that she hugged him uh, in, in the first um, accounting of her uh, alleged assault, right? It says that she hugged him, so doesn't state that she got his permission, so I am presuming, I am assuming that she hugged him without consent. So guess what? You have two people, according to this standard that they've set, you have two people who who sexually assaulted each other in 2011. Guess what? Let's put cuffs on both of them and throw them away. And throw away the key. Put them in jail and throw away the key. Because that's the standard you have, you have set, Jamie, Ron, Monica. That's the standard you have set. That any physical contact that is not expressly uh, consented to, regardless of reason, is now sexual assault and we should just throw away the key so every time a parent you know hugs or kisses their their a kid without the kid saying it throw that parent in jail because they just sexually assaulted a minor you see how stupid that sounds when you actually apply some thought to it but anyway so continuing Right, so then it says here that though the camera veered slightly to the right just before, plaintiff even jested on camera about the tight grasp he had over Jamie. And then it has a picture of Vic with, um, I would say, his right hand and balled up into some sort of fist. Keep in mind, this is taken out of context. It doesn't say which part of the video this screenshot comes from, which is, of course, the point. This isn't about necessarily being honest. This is about trying to paint Vic in a false light. What irritates me is that Mr. Lawyer Man apparently thinks that anybody who sees this, be it me or Nick Ricada or various people who've been following this or ultimately the judge, are just going to see this and automatically believe that it's Vic demonstrating the, the, the alleged tight grip he had on Jamie's hair. Although by Vic's own uh, te testimony, one second, just got to find it. One moment, one moment. One second, I'm just trying to find it. I have so many tabs open here, you wouldn't believe. Oh, come on. One moment. Oh, here we go. So, right, so let's look again at Vic's uh, account of what happened, right? So, so here's the question he was asked. So what was it exactly that she mischaracterized or took out of context? And Vic answers, shoot, I just lost it. Sorry. And Vic answers, she mischaracterized my, my memory of, of the event with Jamie was that I had come in to record one day at Funimation, and I was in the lobby. So he confirms that they, they, were, they were both in the lobby. And she was there, and she had just changed her hair somehow. She, had, she was wearing it differently, or she had cut it somehow. Probably as far away as I am from Casey. And she said, hey, hon. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love your hair. And she's like, I know, I just got it. And I walked around the, the, the counter, and I was kind of standing there, uh, and I was kind of standing there kind of flipping it, and like, oh my gosh, it's really beautiful. I love it. And, and I put my hand up in the bottom of it, and I'm like, oh, this is, oh, this is great. It was not painful, it was not hurtful, it was not sexual, and it happened at least four or five years ago, maybe longer. And if I may say, I saw Jamie in the lobby at Funimation in January of this year, literally a week to ten days before this social media thing started, and she's like, hey hon, and went over and hugged her and said hello. She and I have had, as far as I've known, a very casual, friendly relationship 
for many, many years, and I was astounded by her accounts online. Vic is then asked, and the account online is that you pulled her hair? Vic answers, and that I pulled her hair and that I, that I whispered something sexual in her ear, which absolutely is not true. I do not, have not, ever had any sexual interest in Jamie. Next question. Miss Markey certainly wouldn't be the first woman whose hair you've pulled. Vic answers, no, we've established that. But I would like, but I would take issue with the word pulling hair. That sounds like something you do in a fight with somebody. And that is not the intent ever, nor do I believe they took it that way at the time. So that is Vic's account of it, right? That his intent was not sexual, that his intent was only playful and that he objects to the idea of pulling hair because he associates that with a violent act, in particular, fighting. All right, so that's what Vic says, right? So that's his account, that, his, that, that he was only touching her hair in a playful manner. All right, so there's, so uh, there's, there's that. All right, let me see if there's anything else here that I want to cover for this section here. All right, so that's not admitting to assault. That's not admitting to assault. Should have Vic touched her hair? No, he shouldn't have. But then again, she shouldn't have hugged him without uh, his, his express permission either. And then it says here, right, the plaintiff had the audacity to interpret how he thought Jamie should have felt. It was not painful, it was not hurtful, it was not sexual, and it happened four or five years ago, maybe longer. Let's go back to that. I know I just read it, but let's go back to that. Let me just find that. One moment. Ah, so, here we are. I'm going to cover that part again really quick, right? So let's, so let's, so let's get the question that Vic was asked, right? Just so we understand the context, since Mr. Lawyer Man doesn't want to be uh, uh, truthful about the context, right? So the question is, so what is it exactly, so what is it exactly that she mischaracterized or took out of context? So, again, Vic, Vic um, right, confirms that he saw her, they were in a lobby, they met, uh, he touched her hair, right? He admits that. He says that he said that he was flipping her her uh, hair and that he did put his hand up in the bottom of it right but he never says that he pulled it he he he, he objects to to the idea that that he pulled her hair so he says here it was not painful it was not hurtful it was not sexual and it happened four or five years ago maybe longer this is not to me again looking at this in context mr. Johnson mr. Sam Johnson Looking at this in context, I think it's safe to say that this was not Vic in any way trying to tell Jamie how she, how she was supposed to feel. He was saying that from his perspective, right, from his perspective, that it was not painful, it was not hurtful, it was not sexual. He's saying that from his perspective, he meant no pain, no hurt, nor was it sexual. He's not telling her how to feel, he's telling the attorney questioning him, which was either Lemoyne or Johnson, I forget which one was, was questioning him at that moment. But to me, I think it's fairly clear if you actually look and do the research and look at his testimony, right, that Vic, uh, that, uh, Vic was talking about how he, oh God, sorry about the noise, that he was that that the not painful, not hurtful, not not sexual was how he interpreted uh, his actions, how he understands his actions with her at that particular time. Not not telling her how to feel, he's saying this is how I perceived it. These these are how I perceived my motivations and intentions at that time. I meant no harm. That's the way I perceive it. Right? So Continuing, so it says here, uh, back to the document, if plaintiff objects to Jamie's characterization of the hair pulling incident, his appropriate course of action would be to have not pulled her hair in the first place. 
I agree there, although Vic doesn't say that he pulled her hair. He denies pulling her hair, but I agree with that statement. But then again, Jamie shouldn't have hugged him. And she shouldn't have continued to hug him. And she shouldn't have continued to act as if they were, they were perfectly fine when they weren't. But I do agree in principle with this statement, even, if, even though not so in application. So, what I find really interesting is this section here, which is in bold. Which is in bold. Nothing in this legal action or any other forum can change the fact that what Jamie reported in her statement really happened and that she has a, cons a constitutional right to speak out about it. Number one. Nothing that has been stated in this TCPA so far ever says or ever confirms that what Jamie talked about actually happened. What's been confirmed is that part of her story has been confirmed true because both her testimony and Vic's testimony confirmed that they were at Funimation, that they were in a lobby, and that Vic touched her hair. Those three parts are, are, are confirmed. That is not in debate. However, Monica, not Monica, sorry, Jamie, Jamie asserts that Vic's playful touching became a forceful grab, that he bent her back, pulled her head backwards, bent her back, and whispered something sexual in her ear, and that she somehow escaped from him and never felt safe at Funimation while he was around again. Keep in mind, this was supposed to have happened in a lobby, yet... Mon uh, not Monica, I keep saying Monica. Yet Jamie has no witness to vouch for her. At least as of yet. As of the filing of this document, she has not provided a witness that can vouch for her. Even all the other affidavits that were submitted with, with, with Ron and Monica's TCPA. None of them ever said that I so-and-so witnessed Vic Mignogna do A, A B, C, and D to Jamie Marchi. So she has no one to corroborate her story. Her story is already full of holes. And guess what? The fact that Vic admits touching her hair does not confirm her story because he denies the rest of it. He denies pulling, he denies pulling her hair. He denies, he, he flatly denies um, saying anything sexual in her ear and he flatly denies even being sexually attracted to her. So no, Mr. Johnson, I think it's his name, Sam Johnson. No, Mr. Johnson. No, Mr. Lawyer Man. This legal... Uh, sorry. No. There's no proof that what Jamie reported in her statement really happened. The best we can say is that it partially happened. Because, again, all the evidence thus far does confirm that they were in a lobby at Funimation and Vic touched her hair. But there is not enough evidence to conclude that the second part, which is the most important part of Jamie's allegation, actually is true. Which is that Vic pulled her head, pulled her hair, pulled her head back, and whispered sexy words in her ear. She has not sufficiently proven that. So no, please, if you ever do this again, please do not put in bold that nothing in this legal action or any other form can change the fact that what Jamie reported is true. Because that's not the truth, buddy. It's not the truth. You have not proven that her entire account is true. All you've proven is that Vic played with her hair one time back in 2011. But anyway, so there's that, and then she has a constitutional right to speak out about it. Again! Again, you have to prove that her constitutional right to speak out about it was violated. Remember, Vic is not part of Congress. Vic is not the law. Vic is not in any um, uh, level of government. He doesn't work for anybody in the government. So again, how was her constitutional right to speak out violated? When again, the First Amendment right protects people uh, against the government trying to censor them. So explain that to me. Explain that to me. How was her constitutional right to speak out somehow violated? So anyway, there's that part. Let me see here. I think I already covered that. Uh, one moment. I covered that. Ah, so this next part here. So, 
this part says, plaintiff, plaintiff cannot in good faith deny that he is a public figure. There are two categories of public figure status under Texas law, general purpose and limited purpose. Now watch here, the, the definition of, of, of general purpose is going gonna, is gonna to switch just like that. So here's what it says. General purpose public figures have achieved such pervasive fame or notoriety that they become public figures for all purposes in all contexts. Right? So there's your first definition of it. Right? Then it says, 17, a public figure is a person with general fame or notoriety in the community. Which one is it? Which one is it, Mr. Lawyer Man? Is it such pervasive fame or notoriety that, the, that they become public figures for all purposes and in all contexts? Or is it that a public figure is a person with, with general fame or notoriety in the community? And keep in mind, it just says, in the community. It does not specify which community. There are many communities. There is the anime community. There's the pro wrestling community. There's the film community. There's the cartoon community. There's the makeup community, right? There are so many different communities. Which community are you talking about? You see, here's a public figure, right? Here's a public figure um, with, with you know, who has become so no, well known, right? Such pervasive fame or, or notoriety, right? That they become uh, public figures for all purposes and all context. Right? Take Justin Bieber. Right, Justin Bieber is so well known because he has achieved worldwide fame that you don't have to follow Justin Bieber to know what's going on with him. Right? You don't have to follow music, you don't have to follow pop music, you don't have to follow his page. You don't have to follow any social media regarding Justin Bieber to know what's going on in his life. You have to follow this to know what's going on. You have to follow this closely to know what's going on. I think any reasonable person would see that Vic is nowhere near on the level of uh, fame and notoriety as, say, a Justin Bieber. So I don't really see how the public figure uh, definition applies. But let's look at what uh, the attorney is alleging here, right? 17. Plaintiff is a general purpose uh, figure, right? Gen gen general purpose public figure, right? So. Again, the definition, we, we, we now have two definitions. And the definition being used here to try to prove that Vic is a public figure, a general purpose public figure, I should say, is a person with, with general fame or notoriety. Keep in mind, just a moment ago, it was being so famous that, that you're well known for all contexts and purposes. But now it's just being a person with, with general fame or notoriety in the community. Not that they ever explained what the community is. But anyway, so 18, it says, Among other things, plaintiff testified in his deposition that he has a fan club called the Risen Bull Rangers who found his notoriety so compelling as to dub him with the title of Fuhrer. Yeah. How many people outside of anime know of the Risen Bull Rangers? Many people within anime don't know the Risen Bull Rangers because they're Vic's fan club. And guess what? Unless you are familiar with the work Full Metal Alchemist, you are not going to know what Risenbull is. Risenbull is not a popular or well-known fan term. It's a reference to the show, to the anime and manga Full Metal Alchemist. The only way you are going to know what the term Risenbull means or what the term Fuhrer means is if you are familiar with Full Metal Alchemist. And apparently, the attorneys have not done their research because they keep trying to attach Fuhrer to Vic in a negative context, trying to say that, oh, your fans think that, that you're a white supremacist, that you're the head white supremacist. No. As anybody who follows Full Metal Alchemist or is familiar with it knows, Fuhrer is the title of the head of state for the country of Amestris. That's all it is. It's a neutral title. Right? FMA does not take place in the regular world. Hitler doesn't exist in that world. A Holocaust exists, that's true, or a Holocaust-like event with the extermination of, of the Ishvalans, but Hitler himself doesn't exist. The title of Fuhrer is just a neutral title for head of state. Remember, one of the heroes, Roy Mustang, wants to be Fuhrer, and Roy is not 
uh, um, uh, ever cast as a as a villainous person, right? So, again, you have to know FMA to know these terms and to know this. Otherwise, you get stuff like attorneys mischaracterizing the the, the term Führer and trying to make Vic look like an anti-Semite when he's not. But anyway, so that is A. Then there's B, which is he has been in movies, TV shows, and has voice acted for hundreds of Japanese animated a- anime films. Again, how well known is is Japanese anime in America? This this standard might apply if say they were in Japan, but this is America. Anime is not a huge deal. The fact that Broly happened to be a popular film doesn't mean that Vic is suddenly world famous. Okay. Voice acting in a niche genre does not automatically make somebody general purpose famous. There are plenty of voice actors who have done hundreds of roles. Jim Cummings has done uh, uh, hundreds of roles. How many people know that, that, that Jim Cummings actually voiced Scar for a bit in The Lion King? Next to nobody unless you actually follow that. Most people, if you ask them uh, who, who voiced Scar in The Lion King... Assuming they even know, they're probably going to say Jeremy Irons because Jeremy Irons is a famous actor. Jim Cummings is not a famous actor. He's a prolific actor. He's a well-known actor. He's not a famous one. So there you go. C. He has been a voice actor for almost 20 years and has been repeatedly hired over that time period because, and this is quoting Vic, somebody must think he's good or rather I'm good. That's what Vic said. At what he does. Yeah, being hired, right, does not mean that, again, that you are general purpose famous, that you are a general purpose public figure. I've been in my line of work for almost 10 years now. I am generally well spoken of. People at schools that I have not personally attended know me. That does not make me a general purpose figure. Right, D. Thousands of convention attendees come to see plaintiff and or meet him. Yes, thousands of people come to meet him. Millions of people go to see a Justin Bieber concert. Anyway, allegations about the plaintiff's homophobia, anti-Semitism, and sexual harassment are being discussed publicly. Being discussed publicly in a niche circle is being discussed publicly among channels that are aware of the situation many of them being channels that follow anime in particular follow dbz again that is a niche tell me of one mainstream news source cnn fox news abc cbs uh, nbc tell me of one main news source that has reported on this situation io9 is not a mainstream news source. Anime News Network is not a mainstream news source. Right? What else is it? Uh, I don't know. Polygon is not a mainstream news source. Those are niche news sources. Those are hobby specific news sources. They are not mainstream. Anyway. And the alleged Minnesota attorney, that would be Nick Ricado who started the plaintiff's quarter million legal quarter million dollar legal war chest reached out to plaintiff without ever having known him before that's not proof that Vic is a general purpose figure again Nick follows certain um, lawsuits that interest that interest him for one reason or another he started following this one I think in part because he was following the uh, Meyer Wade case and that and that's very similar to the Vic case. I think it's through Meyer Wade that he learned about the uh, Vic Mignana matter. The fact that Nick was moved to actually personally help uh, Vic does not mean again that Vic is a public figure. Nick certainly isn't a public figure. Nick doesn't even have as as many Twitter followers or as many um, uh, YouTube followers as as Vic does. Not to insult Nick or anything. That's not menacing at all. I'm just saying, he doesn't have that that type of, of of following. And more importantly, says here that the that the war chest, the GoFundMe war chest, right, 
is quarter is is at a quarter million dollars, right? Quarter quarter of a mil. Last I looked at it, it was at uh, two hundred thirty thousand, I believe, or around there, two hundred thirty-one thousand. I'm trying to find it right now. One second. I have so many tabs up. Uh, oh, here we go. Right, so one moment. It'll probably be a little bit different by the time the video actually gets online, but as of right now, as of recording, which is 2.24 p.m. New York City time, the GoFundMe is at $232,000.07, right? Right, two, so, so we'll just round off and say $232,000 at the time of recording. That is nowhere near a quarter of a million. That's about, what, 18 grand off? More or less, that's around 18 grand off. So, uh, why are you always lying? But anyway, moving on, we have point G. A lot of people have used plaintiff's face and name over the years for their own purposes without plaintiff's involvement. I don't see how that in any way establishes that Vic is a general purpose public figure. Don't see what it has to do with anything. Ah, this is the one that I love the most, right? Plaintiff has approximately 113,000 Twitter followers. Actually, to my knowledge, it's jumped up to about 1,116. Let me check. Let me check. But I love this this Twitter followers one. So, Vic Mignano, one second, I, I just needed to load. Vic Mignano at present has about 116,000 uh, Twitter followers. One second. I don't. So, uh, load, load, load. Oh, yes. According to Twitter, Vic's followers are at 116,000, right? Probably rounded up. Okay. Let's look at fellow voice actor Travis Willingham. Right? He played Roy in Full Metal Alchemist. So Ed has 116,000 Twitter followers. Roy has, th uh, sorry, Roy has 289,000. 289,000 Twitter followers. He could lose the same amount that Vic has and still have over 100,000. In fact, let me, one second, I have my phone here with me. Let me do the math. Let me do the math. Right, so, uh, Travis, Travis Willingham, right, Roy Mustang, has 289,000 followers, right? Vic has 116,000. If, if you were to take away, right, all of Vic's followers from Travis, right, take 116,000 people from Travis, Travis still has 173,000 followers, right? And actually, Travis is outshined by his lovely wife, Laura Bailey. Come on, Paige. Load. Thank you. Laura Bailey, who has 363 thousand. You could take her husband's uh, uh, Twitter following away from her. Let's see. She has 363. He has 289. If you take that away, right, she'll still have a, have a Twitter following of 74,000, right? Now, let's see what happens if you take Laura's uh, uh, 363 and you take away Vic's uh, 116. Laura would still have, right, 247, right, so, so if we take Vix away, right, from, from Laura, she would still have 247K, right, that would just put her a, about 40,000-ish, more or less, behind Travis, who's at 289. So again, we have Laura Bailey, who could lose the, the same amount Vic has and still have over 200,000. We have Travis, who can lose the, the same amount of followers Vic has and still be at over 100,000. We have Vic, who, if he loses all of his Twitter followers, will no longer have a Twitter following. And again, I don't say these things. I want to be clear. I'm not saying these things to throw shade on Vic. Never. This isn't about throwing shade on Vic. This is just establishing that 
if we are going on Twitter counts, that his is easily outshined by other people, right? There are, there are voice actors in the industry that have a larger following. And then if you compare him to an actual general, pur general purpose public figure, like uh, makeup sensation James Charles, who apparently Monica has stolen his look and not done it nearly as well. But anyway, if you look at him, right, if you look at his Twitter page, he has 3.88 million followers. I want to repeat that. On Twitter alone, he has 3.88 million followers. He could lose Vix amount of followers, uh, uh, Laura's amount of followers, and Travis. He could lose over, what, 400,000, 500,000 followers and still have millions to spare. Because he, James Charles, is a general public, general purpose public figure. Vic is not. If we are going by Twitter followers, if this is somehow a competition of how many followers do you have, Vic pales far behind. Twitter following is by no means a, a, a strong uh, uh, argument for being, or rather trying to consider Vic to be, a general purpose uh, public figure, especially when there are at least two other act, two other voice actors in the industry who outpace him by over a hundred thousand in both cases. Again, not to throw shade at Vic. This isn't about throwing shade at Vic. I'm just trying to demolish this foolish argument that somehow because he has a hundred and now sixteen thousand followers, that somehow this makes him a general purpose. Um, uh, public figure. So then it has point I, which says, Plaintiff also writes music and sings, and anyone who lives in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex has likely heard a few of his jingles on the radio. That is entirely subjective. That is entirely sub subjective. Do you know how large Dallas-Fort Worth is? Do you know how la large the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex is? Again, Vic is not on the fame of, say, a Taylor Swift. Yes, you can say with certainty that 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 someone in the Dallas Fort Worth area metroplex has heard a Taylor Swift song. You cannot say that for Vic. He doesn't have the same reach as Taylor Swift or any other mainstream music artist. So again, so plaintiff is allegedly so popular. This is point J. Alleged plaintiff is allegedly so popular that he gets invited to conventions multiple times in a row, breaking common practice for most convention attendees. Uh, sorry, invitees. Still, I don't see what that has to do with anything. That still does not make him a general purpose public figure. It just proves that he's good at his job, and despite all the rumors and complaints about him, people still like him. Right? And that's why these conventions call him back, because he draws money. So those are my thoughts on the general purpose public figure argument. I think it's especially weak. That's just my opinion on it. And then you have B, which is alternatively, plaintiff is a limited purpose public figure. I have to admit that I think um, this one, the limited purpose one, actually applies better because here's what it says. The Texas Supreme Court relies on a three-part test in determining whether an individual is a limited purpose public figure. One, the controversy at issue must be public both in the sense that people are discussing it and that people other than the immediate participants in the controversy are likely to feel the impact of this resolution. Two, plaintiff must have more than a trivial or, or, or tangential role in the controversy. And three, the alleged defamation must be germane to plaintiff's participation in the, in the uh, controversy. I actually do believe that this applies much better than the general purpose one. Because the controversy is being discussed, right? And the immediate, uh, and people other than the participants are likely to... Um, feel the impact. They're already feeling the impact, right? Vic's roles, at least at, at, at Rooster Teeth, have been recast. That impacts the fan's ability to enjoy uh, any of the works that he was formerly on. 
because many people will watch a work or 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 you know they they say oh you know this character is my favorite because Vic voices him right so so now their enjoyment of the work is is impacted because uh, Vic I'm about to say Roy Vic is no longer voicing uh, certain characters because he's lost his job this also impacts say the fans because of conventions right a lot of conventions dropped Vic right so that means that presumably there were people who were going who wanted to see Vic who now may have canceled right because Vic wasn't going to be there or even if they went right their experience is now different because the person they wanted to see is not there so I would actually say that 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 does apply Certainly, uh, Vic does have more than a, than a trivial or tangential role, and the de defamation is certainly germane to plaintiff's participation in the controversy, right? He's the big scandal, right? So I think this does apply. I think it's much easier to apply it than the first one. I think the first one is dead in the water, the general purpose one, but the limited purpose, I, I do think that applies. That being said, that being said, I do believe that uh, if the general purpose one applies, then it doesn't just apply to Vic. It applies to Monica, it applies to Jamie, and it applies to Ron. So I would say that we have four limited purpose public figures. Public figures, Vic Mignogna, Monica Rial, Ron Toye, Jamie Marchi, at least. Oh, and Funimation, so that's five. So at the moment, we have five, five public figures, four of them being human, one of them being uh, a company. So that's the way I interpret it. So I do believe that if you have a chance to apply the public figure, it's limited purpose, but it has to apply to all parties involved, not just to Vic. That's my interpretation, but that's my understanding. Let me see, what am I at here? Uh, oh, okay, I'm almost at an hour and a half. This is probably actually going to take longer than the other video. Sorry. So, let's see here. Uh, where am I? Where am I at? Uh, let's see here. One moment. Uh, this is weird. Uh, let me see here. Uh, sorry, one moment. Sorry, one second. Oh, one moment. Sorry, sorry. Oh, here we go. So this was the limited public figure, as I just said, that does apply, I think. So... One moment. Oh! Oh, okay. So there's another part here that says, Jamie's statement to relate to the health, safety, and community well-being. Right, so it says here that, uh, so part of the argument, and this comes from the document, is not only do Jamie's statements relate to this, her own state of safety, but she declared at the time of making them that her intent was to protect and acknowledge plaintiff's other past and future victims. And, and it, quotes, it quotes Jamie here saying, had I been able to speak up then, maybe less women would have had to, uh, maybe less women would have had to experience what happened. But in this moment, I want the others to who I know are out there to hear this. It wasn't just you. It's okay if you didn't say anything. Um, well, let me read this full, in full first. It's okay if you didn't say anything to him or anyone else. Yeah, um, I officially and formally contest that. Because again, this the one of the arguments is that, especially on the convention circuit, that Vic has been a predator and a creep for years, but no one said anything because apparently he's Vic Mignogna and he's powerful. So guess what? In my opinion, if, if, if all you people knew this, and you didn't speak out, and you allowed a predator to continue being a predator, 
then yeah, um, it's not okay if you didn't say anything because now you are complicit in putting other people's safety at risk. So no, I disagree with Jamie here when she says that it's okay that you didn't say anything to him or anyone else. No, it's not okay if you didn't say anything to him or anyone else because first of all, Vic has expressed, and I believe him, sincere um, dumbfoundedness and amazement that uh, Monica and Jamie or others are making these allegations. From what I can tell from emails he has sent to Monica and whatnot, he does not, or at least at the time when he sent the emails, he did not understand why. Sorry for the noise. He did not understand why uh, she was making these allegations and he asked her to explain to which she wouldn't do. She just forwarded the email to uh, Colleen Carroll, who may or may not be Colleen Clickenbeard. I'm not sure. And then I think she also forwarded the email to uh, the person at Funimation. Uh, at, 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 at Funimation or Sony because Vic technically was was violating the order to not contact her um, after uh, well not contact her during the investigation process which I have to admit was a bad move on his part I know he didn't mean um, any harm by it you can tell by the email but if someone says to not contact somebody especially during a formal investigation don't contact somebody, especially during a formal investigation. But yeah, outside of that, if you didn't say anything, then yeah, I, I, I think you're a problem. Because if you don't say anything, then guess what? People can't deal with it. If people don't come to my office, for example, and tell us what's happening, what's going on, how in the world do you expect my supervisor to look into these things and to see what the issue is? How do you expect to resolve, for example, legitimate sexual harassment if the person being sexually harassed never tells anybody? No, so no, sitting on your hands and keeping your mouth shut for nearly a decade does not help. So please, don't do that. Anyway, continuing, this is again her uh, statement. You are not responsible for what happened. You do not have to be dismissive, ashamed, or afraid. Also, I hope that if anyone ever goes through a similar experience, they will know that from the start that their body is not up for debate. Their body is not property for the most popular person in the room. Their body is not responsible for a company or a show or an art form. Their body is most definitely not responsible for the reputation and livelihood of a predator. That apparently nobody had the guts to talk about and bring to justice until now by making unfounded allegations and by telling very shaky accounts that again have more holes than Swiss cheese but I uh, I digress but here's the thing so here's here's her statement right right two different parts right of course taken out of context but still right here's what makes me laugh about mr. Johnson with this one right so he's talking about the state of safety, right? And he's talking about, again, you know, Vic being a predator and, and you know, speaking up and all this stuff. The next sentence, right, after, af after the, the uh, quote of Jamie's statements is, Multiple Texas courts have held that statements about mental illness, domestic abuse, murder for hire ploys, and other situational statements were a matter of public concern under the TCPA. This dude just jumped up to the top of the building. He is leading with mental illness, domestic abuse, murder for hire. He is acting like the news right now, right? If it... Oh, I hate city noises, sorry. He is leading with the news right now, right? It's like the news. If it bleeds, it leads. He just jumped out with the most serious scenarios, with the most last case scenarios to somehow try to argue that that Jamie coming out is a matter of public safety and public concern. Um, I'm, I'm not going to deny and say that again, you know, speaking out about a serial predator, which they allege Vic is, is not a matter of public concern. Of course it is. But to lead with this mental illness, domestic abuse, murder for hire, he just, he just, <laughs> he 
He just skipped several flights of stairs. He just went to the top of the building to make his point. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's just that that just makes me laugh. I just had to share it because it makes me laugh at just how over the top he went with that one. But anyway. Uh next point. So here's here's the point I was talking about earlier that, that, that I'm gonna get into a little bit more. Right, it says the TCPA, this is this is point twenty one. Uh, the TCPA ultimately applies because Jamie's complaint of statements, again, those are the ones that, that Ty Beard sent a cease and desist letter to her for. You can read the letter um, as part of the, the, the supporting documents if you so choose. Right, so it says here, the TCPA ultimately applies because Jamie's complaint of statements are protected by her right of free speech. Right, it says here that the, that the TCPA defines that right as any communication made in connection with a matter of public concern. First of all, you have to define public. Right, what is the public in this case? Right, I guess one would assume where anime fans gathered like a convention. But more importantly, she says here that 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 Jamie is protected by her right of free speech. So let's actually look at the First Amendment right. Of free speech right so this is the First Amendment I'm pulling this from the Cornell Law School Legal Information Institute right First Amendment right Amendment 1 Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or bridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Again, the beginning, Congress shall make no law, right? And then it goes to abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The First Amendment protects you against, generally speaking, protects you against the government trying to silence you. In fact, here is another, I believe it comes from U.S. Courts, just give me a moment. Uh, I'm trying to find it. As the city makes noise. So, this, this, this comes from U.S. Courts.gov, right? It says here, the First Amendment states in relevant part that Congress shall make no law abridging freedom of speech and it and it says here that freedom of speech includes the right to not speak specifically the right to not salute the flag of students and these are just some examples right it's not an all exhaustive list right but the right not to speak to not salute the flag of students to wear black armbands to 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 school to protest a war to use certain offensive words and phrases to convey to convey political messages, to contribute money under certain circumstances to political campaigns, to advertise commercial products and professional services with some restrictions, to engage in symbolic speech, example burning the flag in protest. So freedom of speech protects these rights. Generally speaking, with the exception of the one about commercial products, it protects the right for a person to express dismay or disdain against the government. It protects your right to speak out against the government. Vic Mignana is not the government, as I have stated numerous times. But this, this, this uh, page over here also states that freedom of, freedom of speech does not include the right. And it lists several things, but I want to choose the two that are that are applicable to this situation in particular to Jamie's tweets right the freedom of speech does not include the right to incite actions that would harm others example shouting fire in a crowded restaurant or a crowded theater to make or distribute obscene materials now I know I would certainly view and I know I certainly view uh, her tweets about wanting Vic's head and wanting Vic's balls and wanting him to experience an ounce of the suffering that others allegedly have and her tweet about uh, Vic, or rather tweet about what would Jesus do, he would set Vic on, Vic on fire 
and send him to hell, more or less, right? I know I find those to be quite violent and obscene, and they've certainly been distributed because they've been tweeted and we and and retweeted and they've been covered by various channels so they've certainly been distributed and I think most would agree that such language is violent and obscene and I I would argue that it is at least a potential incitement to violence because she says that she wants violent acts uh, or rather she wants him to suffer violent acts right I want his head I want his balls that right there it to me is implied decapitation by bring me his head implied decapitation and implied castration I want his balls bring me his balls how do you do that you cut them off so to me that's implied uh, decapitation implied um, uh, uh, castration and with the Jesus one not only as Ty stated in his uh, cease and desist letter, not, not only is it blasphemous and totally mischaracterizing Jesus, Jesus would forgive, Jesus would tell Vic to sin no more, but it also calls for, for Vic being set on fire, right? The tweet says, what would Jesus do? Light him on fire and send him to hell. Self, uh, not self, sorry. Immoliation, right? Burning to death is one of the most painful ways a person can die. And usually, right, when you tell someone to go to hell, right, when you're cursing them out, when you're being mean, when you, when you tell somebody go to hell, what do you usually mean? You want them to suffer, right? Because the idea of hell is eternal damnation and suffering. She wants Vic to suffer. Going by, by these tweets, I do think it could be reasoned that she wants Vic to suffer and that she wants Vic to suffer especially painfully. So I personally would take these tweets as a potential incitement to violence against him because you know that there is some crazy person out there who could possibly see this and then try to attack him at a con. I'm just thankful it hasn't happened yet but to me with these tweets the possibility is there. So. Uh, I would like to think Jamie has actually listened and taken the tweets down, but if she hasn't, honey, take the tweets down, if only to protect yourself from a potential allegation of your tweets being incitement to violence, should anyone who ever proclaims kick Vic ever try to hurt Vic, you fool. But anyway, that's just my opinion on the matter. Right? So, again, right? So, uh, I don't see how her freedom of speech was violated. Right? Again, freedom of speech is, it, it protects you against the government trying to censor you. Vic, uh, not Vic, sorry. Ty Beard sending her a cease and desist letter in behalf of his client is not, of, to my knowledge, violating her free speech. So I think that's a baseless argument, right? And then the next one is, let me see here. The next one is, Jamie was exercising her right to association. So it says here, this court must also dismiss plaintiff's legal action because it is based on, relates to, or is in response to Jamie's exercise of her right of association. I would like to know how her right of association was violated that's just me, says that this right of the exercise of association is defined in the TCPA as a communication between individuals who join together to collectively express, promote, pursue, or defend common interest. Again, how is it being violated? Jamie has spoken freely in personal communications and in a public forum, Twitter, with Monica, with Ron, with Funimation, and with others. So how is she in any way, how is um, Ty Beard giving her assist in the cease letter in any way uh, impact her ability to speak with others, to collectively express, promote, pursue, or defend common interest? I would love to know that. How? How? In fact, 
She, Ron, and Monica were watching Vic be deposed. So again, how is her right to association, right, to basically gather with like-minded like -minded individuals, how is that being impacted in any way? How is it being impacted? Because I don't see it. I don't see it. I think that's another baseless claim. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. That's another baseless claim. So it says here again, Jamie's statements were made in the exercise of her association with the broader anime community, fan community, and women who may in the past or future come into contact with plaintiff. Yeah, and she's still doing that. She's still communicating with the anime community, the fan community, and with women who uh, know Vic or may come to know Vic in the future. So again, how is her right to association being violated when she's clearly still associating with people who are connected to this situation. You can't just say something, Mr. Lawyer Man. You have to prove it. So anyway, there's that. So, uh, let me see here. One second. Ah, here we go. This is what I find uh, uh, interesting. This is what I find interesting here. So, right. So, uh, this is the request for attorneys, attorneys' fees and sanctions. This does not surprise me, right? They always ask for the court fees and for the attorneys' fees to be covered. But it says here that number thirty-three, Jamie is entitled to recover an award of sanctions, cost, reasonable attorneys' fees, and other expenses incurred in. in conjunction with with the dismissal. I love how, how he's assuming automatically he's going to win this. But anyway, it says here that an award of attorney's fees to a successful movement is mandatory under the TCPA and Jamie is entitled to her other expenses under principles of justice and equity. Oh, <laughs> oh such ambiguous terms, such ambiguous terms. But anyway, moreover, the court must award sanctions in order to to deter other similar actions where attempts were made to intimidate brave victims into silence where they may have taken the forthright step to speaking out about what happened to them. Hmm. If I remember correctly, Vic, during his deposition, stated that he basically sat in shock for months and didn't do anything because he couldn't believe this was happening. Any, any statement Vic, Vic put out was either apologizing for any wrong he may have done unknowingly or was for um, was calling for fans to be kind. Keep in mind, Monica and Jamie and Ron kept fighting with the fans. Monica, as I stated earlier, kept putting out tweets, putting out that uh, memeable tweet about uh, um, screenshotting um, uh, tweets and sending them to her attorney in law enforcement, which she admitted herself at a later date, in a, in a later message, was harassment and that she threatened others, right? So Jamie and Monica and, and, and Ron are fighting with fans. Monica is sending out a form tweet that's trying to, in my opinion, intimidate fans into silence by threatening the, the possibility of uh, legal action. The, the proposed uh, truce, I guess you could say, written by Chuck Huber, in which Vic throws himself under the bus by admitting he's a sex addict, also included Vic giving up, or rather what, 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 what Monica wanted, I should say. What Monica wanted was for Vic to give up his ability to sue them or their employers ever to get Nick Ricada to apologize for the harassment and to give back the GoFundMe money or to donate it to a good cause. And even for Funimation, the, the uh, proposed Funimation statement would have had Vic having to cover his own attorney costs, giving up the GoFundMe money, and Funny would donate more money, but still. And that, even, even that still included Vic having to give up the GoFundMe. So this was basically ploy, in my opinion, using Chuck Hoover's well-intentioned but terrible 
terrible execution, to try to basically take Vic's ability to seek legal recourse away from him. And yet this document is going to, to say that uh, sanctioning Vic would, would uh, uh, or rather, let me quote the form itself, that the court must also award sanctions, in this case the sanctions would be to Vic if they win, in order to, de to deter other similar actions where attempts are made to intimidate brave victims in the silence. Again, I would say that if anybody was intimidated into silence for months, it was Vic. Again, Monica didn't want him to have the ability, ability to sue. She was perfectly willing to settle things if Vic gave up his ability to seek legal recourse and threw himself under the bus. Monica, Ron, and Jamie fought with fans. Monica sent out harassing tweets. And yet somehow it's Vic who must be sanctioned if they win this. I don't think they're going to win it, but still. When you look at the totality of the evidence, it's not Monica and Jamie and Ron who were being silenced and being bullied. It was Vic. The only reason Vic even got a lawyer, keep in mind, I think he waited until about April to finally make a move on, on, um, uh, on, the, on the legal front, was because he had no other choice. He had to fight back. If he didn't fight back, he would lose his entire career. Whatever little bit is left of it, he fought to save it. So no, honey, no Mr. Lawyer Man who seems to think that the judge and everybody else will be reading this and researching this is an idiot. No, it's not uh, uh, Vic who needs to be sanctioned for trying to silence people. It's Monica, it's Ron, it's your client Jamie, it's Funimation who needs to be sanctioned for trying to silence someone, for trying to bully somebody into silence, if not worse. But again, just my opinion. And then it goes on to say, uh, particularly where a quarter million dollar war chest has been gathered from other people to pay his legal expenses. Uh, again, it's not at a quarter million dollars. Why are you all always lying? And then it says, plaintiff has no reason to avoid spacious, don't know what that means, lawsuits in the future without learning his lesson in this one. No, 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 the lesson Vic should learn from this is that you need to fight back. Sometimes you cannot do the good Christian thing and turn the other cheek. At times someone really is trying to ruin you and trying to take everything from you. And when they do, you fight back with everything you have because it's your life at stake. So that's what I hope Vic has learned from all this. So let me see here. I think, yeah, I think that's about it. So I think that's about everything. That's the majority of the. Uh, that's the majority of the uh, uh, TCPA. So I'll be putting in links and whatnot. But that's it. So I don't really think. I mean, reading this again, it wasn't as egregious as. Uh, uh, What's his name? Um, Jay Shantz? But still, I, I think there's a lot of mischaracterization here, a lot of untruth, a lot of twisting words, which I can't say I'm surprised by, but it is saddening from my perspective. It's saddening that this happens to happen at all. And again, you have what, who, whom I would deem to be the people who are attacking Vic, trying to make themselves look like the victims. What I find interesting about uh, Mr. Johnson's approach to this is that he keeps trying to paint Jamie as this uh, damsel in distress who could not, who could not defend herself against the evil, vicious Vic Mignogna, that evil sexual predator. Yet her own tweets show that she has a very fiery, crass, sarcastic, sassy, strong-willed personality. It can't be both. You cannot be willing to, to talk trash on Twitter, and then when, when there's actual legal, legal proceedings, 
suddenly act like you know you're you're on the uh, the uh, fainting couch going oh I couldn't I couldn't protect myself I never felt safe again in Funimation after that and then he testifies that you two had had hugged not even ten days before everything happened which one is it Monica are you a fire are you a firebrand are you a victim or is it is it option three the option I believe that you're a liar that you're lying about this for whatever your reasons are that you're joining in on the mob that for whatever reason maybe you've never liked them I don't know Vic like he said he seems to to have bad uh, char bad judge of character after all maybe you're just jumping in and like everybody else trying to kick a man while he's down and the reason he's down and taking antidepressants and seeking therapy isn't because he did something terrible. Look, he cheated on his girlfriend. Not cool. He's a diva. Not cool. But those are not reasons to fire a man from his job. Those are not reasons to put up these baseless allegations and accuse him of being a sexual predator because he gets around and has can't keep it in his pantsitis. Okay, Sean not sh wait. Up. Sean Schimmel is known as being a diva. Yet you all aren't going after him. Yet. Let me see what else. Chris Sabat a while ago was caught flirting with a cosplayer. Y'all haven't gone after him yet. There's a picture online of Monica kissing a fan in a chair. I can't tell the fan is male or female, but still, she's kissing the fan on the cheek, but somehow it's okay when Monica does it, but when Vic does it, it's him being, being sexually predatory. You can't have it both ways, right? You cannot do this, you know, rules, rules for, for, for thee, but not for me, because guess what happens? When you present these ill-thought-out allegations, when you take what I believe to be, again, just an opinion, what I believe to be what were normal interactions between you all and Vic that you've now turned and weaponized over a decade later, or in Jamie's case, almost a decade later, into sexual harassment to bring the man down. Not just bring the man down, but make sure that he is shunned out of the industry. You know, Nick Ricada on occasion has stated quite vehemently that he sincerely believes that you all were either hoping or did not care whether or not Vic took his own life over this. And again, having read these three now TCPAs, Funimations, Ron and Monica's and now um, Jamie's. Having read these for myself, having looked at the evidence for myself, right, independent of anyone else, I can now say for certain that I agree with Nick in this instance. I do believe that, I'm not quite sure if I believe that you guys were intending for Vic to take his own life, but I don't think that you all would have cared if Vic did. Because, let's be honest, you, Monica, Ron, Funimation as a business, Rooster Teeth as a business, Sean Schimmel, Christopher Sabat, and sadly others, Sonny Strait, for example, J. Michael Tatum, for example, and many others, don't actually care about Vic. You care about your egos, you care about your fame, you care about your petty jealousies, but you don't actually care about him. You don't even care about him, from best I can tell, you don't even care about him as a general human being in the world. And here's the thing, guys, again, to the men, you need to watch yourselves. I would say even to the women too, but especially to the men, because men are easy targets in today's post-Me Me Too world. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Because you are in business, and in the case of Ron, in bed 
with snakes and snakes turn on each other sooner or later they're gonna make accusations against you they're gonna throw you under the bus they're gonna take an innocent interaction they had with you Sean you J Michael though that might be a little bit harder because he's gay but still they're gonna take innocent interactions they had with you guys and turn them into something they were not and that is when you will finally learn when it happens to you that is when you will finally learn that you backed the wrong side that you sided with a snake instead of the actual victim in this situation you talk about believe victims believe survivors if any of you at all actually believe in that then support Vic Mignano because he's the victim here he is the one who was bullied into silence he's the one who's lost everything Monica hasn't lost crap Jamie hasn't lost crap Ron hasn't lost crap Vic effectively lost everything because they can't prove Jack because Jack didn't happen if y'all actually care about believing survivors and believing victims, believe Vic. And if you don't actually believe that, then please shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Please stop putting tweets up on your, on your Twitter accounts talking about one in three women don't report sexual assault and this is why. No, no, no. One in three women, I don't know how many number it is, but let's say it is, that's true. Don't report sexual assault because of people like Monica, because of people like Jamie, who make it that much harder because they lie. Because they lie and they mischaracterize and they victimize people. That's why women don't report it, because they don't want to be thought of as the next Monica or the next Jamie. That's why they don't report it. So when there's another, God forbid, a, a poor man or woman is truly sexually assaulted, and that case is put aside, and, that, and people think, ah, yeah, sure, sure, you know, I heard that story before about some chick being accosted in a hotel. Remember the Monica situation? Remember how she lied about Vic? When that happens, all you can do is blame yourself. When that person doesn't get justice, you can blame yourself. Because women like Monica Rial, women like Jamie Marchie, and the fools who support them are why actual victims are not listened to. <sighs> Truly losing my temper now. So anyway, that's the video. I've gone on longer with this. this. This was a shorter document, but it has a longer video. So anyway, that's the vid. That's all I have to say. Well, I shouldn't, I sh I shouldn't lie. There is more that I could say. I'm just electing not to because it's been two hours now. And I'm about done with, with this document. If I keep talking, I'm just going to keep ranting angrily, and I don't want to do that. So that's the vid. Let me know what you think. And again... I don't mind uh, d dissenting opinions, but if you're going to be a be a a hole about things, move on by, take it somewhere else, because I don't play that. So anyway, I hope you all have a good week, and I will see you around. Have a good week. Keep things safe, sane, and consensual. Bye.